The onslaught of herbicide-resistant weeds in Mid-South fields has motivated producers to look for alternative means of control. Many have found cover crops to be a sustainable solution. The first benefit I saw right right off the bat was was weed control. Uh, the, the cover crops I grow with the biomass that I grow have a, a tremendous impact on the ability of a, of a pigweed to germinate. I've been able to save anywhere from 40 to $50 an acre on, on herbicide cost. I've noticed uh, in my fields where, I've had, where the residue has been disturbed that right there, that's where the pigweeds, they, they germinate. So if I can keep the residue from being disturbed, it has a tremendous effect on, on the weed control. University of Tennessee Extension weed scientist Larry Steckel also believes cover crops are part of the answer. He spent much of the last decade researching the best ways to use cover crops for weed control. About 10 years ago, it became very evident to me that long-term sustainability of weed control could not be just gotten with, with just using herbicides. So we looked at cover crops. Now cover crops in and of themselves can provide decent weed control, but not completely by themselves. Uh, what we find is you got holes out there, you got some weed species that seem to get through them better. So neither one of them are long-term sustainable uh, from what we've seen from doing uh, production agriculture, particularly in, in, in cotton, but also soybeans and corn as well. So we looked at seeing if we couldn't integrate the two together to see if we couldn't come with a more sustainable system where we're integrating herbicides in with cover crops. And since then, we've done a lot of trial and error, and I would really emphasize the error on trying to come up with, it, with what cover crops. Um, it, it's really come down to a blend over, over time, over the last decade, where we really like a, a grass crop, uh, most notably cereal rye or wheat, with a legume like a uh, vetch or a crimson clover. There are others, uh, but those are the ones we've kind of settled on for a couple reasons. Number one, they provide us good weed control integrated together where you got the legume out there providing some nitrogen, we get more tonnage, and we get better biomass. And the key is getting good biomass in, in, in that mulch on the ground and that shade on the ground. But we're also looking at, at rates, um, uh, seeding rates of these, trying to dial in those. But what we found is using a thing like cereal rye or wheat with, with like a vetch or a crimson clover has really worked well. And uh, most farmers in Tennessee have some wheat in the bin and it's cheap. So a lot of them have kind of gone that way. And so I've looked at doing more research that way, looking at wheat in with a vetch or crimson clover. And we've gotten very good success getting stand establishment with that, either aerial seeding or drilled in late October to early November and then planting either cotton or soybeans into them. And one of the things we found, particularly with the new technologies, the Extend technology, the Enlist technology, um, we're able to make these cover crops a better weed management tool in that we can uh, terminate them closer to planting or even after planting um, and plant green. And what we see is when we do that, uh, delay our uh, termination instead of doing it two and three weeks before planting is traditionally we're doing it a lot closer to planting or in some cases particularly in soybean after planting uh, but even in cotton right at planting uh, we're getting better consistent weed control on palmer amaranth in particular uh, one of the big highlights of it is is essentially when we're uh, using say a wheat and vetch cover crop and terminating it with say a roundup dicamba at planting we are essentially cutting back the number of Palmer amaranth that come up by 50%. So you've won half, half the struggle right there. And then the ones that do come up, they're delayed, well, upwards of 30 to 40 days uh, before they get four inches tall. So you got longer time to go ahead and spray them and, and, uh, and, and catch them when they're small. So it's really been uh, very encouraging that way. It's also helped uh, cut down herbicide applications. We really only have one herbicide application there to burn down the cover crop. Uh, traditionally in Tennessee, we're spraying at least twice before we ever run the planter, uh, or at least right around planting. So we cut out one of the burn down early on, uh, so there's some savings. And then we're cutting out a herbicide application in crop post-emergence uh, because the cover crop helps us out. So we're saving money on herbicides, on trips across the field. And when we put some dollars and cents to this, we're actually saving money on the whole weed management system. Now, I'm not saying there aren't any drawbacks. There are. One of the biggest things, particularly in cotton, is getting good seed soil contact with the planter. 
and uh, getting a good stand. And it's not something you want to jump whole hog and do, do the whole farm. You want to try it on a field or two and get a feel for it and, uh, and be able to get your planter calibrated uh, so it can, it can get you a good seed soil contact and a good stand. The other drawback is, is insects. Uh, we're finding a lot of insect problems we never had before when you have that basically green bridge which entomologists hate because uh, it harbors a lot of insects, uh, and you take out that, that cover and everything's brown, the only thing out there is green, they're gonna go after it, whether it's soybeans or cotton or what have you. So you're gonna have to be a little more intense management on your insect control with, with insecticide seed treatments or, or insecticide over the top. So it does have some drawbacks from a weed management perspective though, it's been very exciting what we've we developed over the last decade now. I've had three graduate students working on this and uh, we've kind of dialed into basically that legume grass mix and gotten very good weed control with it.